In the mid-nineteenth century, a Frenchman named Gaspard Gustave Coriolis performed several experiments showing the effect of kinetic energy on rotating systems, which have ever since become mythologized as proof of the heliocentric theory of the cosmos. The Coriolis effect is often said to cause sinks and toilet bowls in the northern hemisphere to drain spinning in one direction, while in the southern hemisphere causing them to spin the opposite way, thus providing proof of the spinning ball earth. Once again, however, just like Foucault pendulums spinning either which way, sinks and toilets in the northern and southern hemispheres do not consistently spin in any one direction. Sinks and toilets in the very same household are often found to spin opposite directions, depending entirely upon the shape of the basin and the angle of the water's entry, not the supposed rotation of the earth. From science.howstuffworks.com Quote, while the premise makes sense, that the Earth's eastward spin would cause the water in a toilet bowl to spin as well, in reality, the force and speed at which the water enters and leaves the receptacle is much too great to be influenced by something as minuscule as a single 360-degree turn over the span of a day. When all is said and done, the Coriolis effect plays no larger role in toilet flushes than it does in the revolution of CDs in your stereo. The things that really determine the direction in which water leaves your toilet or sink are the shape of the bowl and the angle at which the liquid initially enters that bowl. So even mainstream science publications admit the so-called Coriolis effect has absolutely no effect on the behavior of water in sinks and toilet bowls. But this fact doesn't deter scammer opportunists in Ecuador and other tourist traps along the equator, where a popular parlor trick is performed using a portable sink to purportedly prove this Coriolis effect. First, the showman sets their sink, already filled with water, perfectly along the equator line, then pulls the drainage plug, showing their audience how the water drains straight down the hole. Next, they pick up their portable sink and walk their gullible audience several meters to the south, into the southern hemisphere, explaining how the Coriolis effect will now cause the water to spin clockwise down the drain. This time, they purposely pour water into the sink from the left-hand side, and quickly pull the drain plug while the water is still spinning clockwise from the angle it was poured. Next, they pick the sink up again and move the magic show a few meters into the northern hemisphere, explaining how the water will now spin counterclockwise. To conclude the show, they then pour water into the sink from the right-hand side making sure to quickly pull the plug while the water is still spinning counterclockwise. The Coriolis effect is also said to affect bullet trajectories and weather patterns as well, supposedly causing most storms in the northern hemisphere to rotate counterclockwise, and most storms in the southern hemisphere to rotate clockwise, to cause bullets from long-range guns to tend towards the right of the target in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. Again, however, the same problems remain. Not every bullet, and not every storm, consistently displays this behavior, and therefore cannot reasonably be used as proof of anything. Many professional snipers have stated unequivocally that they never have to factor or compensate for this supposed Coriolis effect. Sniper bullets are actually affected by wind, temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, sight aperture, and human error, not the alleged spin of the earth. From snipershide.com, quote, I've shot at 2,000 meters, and whoever says Coriolis effect is a factor is full of it. Wind, wind, and more crosswinds will play games with your bullet more than anything else. And from sniperforums.com, quote, I shoot at distances up to 3,000 yards, yet I have never experienced a need to compute for Coriolis effect. I have killed deer out to a thousand yards and never had something go awry that could be attributed to Coriolis. Ironically, the same people who claim sniper bullets are affected by the Earth's spin are the same people who claim planes, helicopters, and hot air balloons are not affected by the Earth's spin, because the entire atmosphere is somehow magically adhered to the Earth and dragged spinning perfectly along with it. These globe-earth apologists cannot have it both ways. 
Either the atmosphere is independent of the Earth's alleged rotation and can affect bullet trajectories, or the Earth and the atmosphere move perfectly together and therefore can have no effect on bullet trajectories whatsoever. If they claim the former, and the atmosphere is independent of Earth's alleged rotation, then helicopters should be able to simply hover in place and in 12 hours be halfway around the world. Or, if they claim the latter, that the Earth and atmosphere do move together, then they are admitting that the so-called Coriolis effect is non-existent and could have no effect on bullets or weather patterns.